Hey Mason, you want to go to the desert? Yeah. Let's go. through the high desert and then go check out some sites today. Some areas that uh, we've been able to find some critters in the past. It's uh, what is the date today, Mason? The date? Uh-huh. April 15th. Absolutely gorgeous drive. <laughs> Del Taco is an important stop. They forgot my freaking fries. <laughs> All right, we'll see what we can find here. Okay, we just flipped this one over and there was a baby sidewinder in there. So he's right underneath here. We're gonna check out. So, we can flip so really a one of our one of the things on the list today. Look at that guy. Now this is a pretty small species of rattlesnake to begin with, and this one is just a tiny baby. If you look at his tail, we'll try to get closer. If you look at his tail, he's just got a tiny, tiny little nub for a tail. I'll try to keep it in the sun. Hey, hold on, Bill, hold on, hold on, hold on, buddy. Hold on, hold on. Hey, stop, stop, stop. Keep stop. him up, Daddy. Look how, he, look how he moves, you guys. Look how he moves. Look how he moves. That's that sidewinding. That's where he gets his name from, the sidewinder. When the ground is super, super hot, that's how they move without burning their little bellies. Come here, Bill. That's how they move without burning their little bellies. And he is absolutely adorable. It's one of the characteristics of uh, this rattlesnake is how they move, and obviously uh, uh, that's where they get their name. Hold on, pal. Now, something about these guys is that their venom is actually really pretty mild as far as rattlesnakes go. These guys are probably not going to kill you. Okay, we've got this guy pretty calmed down. I would never recommend handling a venomous reptile to any of you guys out there. Um, I've been messing with these things for a long time. And um, got this animal to a place where he's really not feeling that defensive. He's just sort of cruising around, looking around a little bit. Um, I would never do this with uh, possibly like a Southern Pacific or a Mojave Green or something like that, where you may have a really, really, really significant bite. Um, Sidewinders for the most part. Are, they are venomous and they are dangerous and I wouldn't recommend this to anybody, but uh, probably not gonna kill you and I'm pretty confident that this guy is not in the mood to bite right now. And he is just absolutely adorable. Look at those little eyelashes on him. Such an awesome, uniquely adapted species of snake. Really beautiful. Definitely made our trip well worth it. Stoked to see one. The desert's really an amazing place. Super important that when you do flip a log or a piece of wood over, that you put it back to where it is. Just because you're not finding something under that piece of wood at that time doesn't mean it's not something's home. Let's check this one out, I'll show you what I mean. There's nothing that we found here, but you can see there's burrows all over the place. Different little dugouts where things have been here, made a burrow, probably gone under the ground now that it's the middle of the day and pretty warm out. Anyway, it's really important that you put the logs or the wood back to where it is just like that. That way that animal still has its home or something else that may be out and about knows where it's at. Leave it the way you found it. We just found a little baby desert hairy scorpion and we're gonna see if we can get him the same way we got the, come here pal. We're gonna see if we can just handle him the same way we did the sidewinder. We're not holding him tight. We're not restricting him. We're just letting him cruise around. Why would he bite anything that he's just crawling on or sting for that matter? He's not going to. We just handle him as if we're just an inanimate object. And 
These guys are the largest, largest scorpion in North America. These guys can get up to like five inches long, really big, not super dangerous. Their sting is probably gonna be like a bee sting and one like this would be even less, but they do get pretty large. Giant desert hairy scorpion, pretty awesome. Found a lot of these at night, walk around with the black light and stuff, but this is the time of year they start to go under the ground during the day, the hot day, and you find them mostly at night. But you can find them under, under boards and stuff right now. It's not too hot out here yet. Pretty cool. We'll let him go. We're gonna put his board back where it's supposed to be. And we're gonna let him go. And we got another, another little critter right here. This is a blue death feening beetle. These are pretty cool, an ironclad beetle. And it's been raining out here quite a bit, so these guys are actually almost black right now. You see that? He just played dead. And that's their signature move. I'll let the scorpion get on his way. But the blue death fainters, you shake them up a little bit, they play dead. Well, this one got over it already. They have a waxy substance that they secrete when it gets when it gets hot and dry, and that wax keeps them from losing moisture to the environment. But this one's more on the black side right now because it rained just uh, last week. We had a lot of rain here, so he was probably if you would have found him, then he'd be jet black. And another week, he's going to be a nice uh, tinge of blue. Anyway, cool bug, blue death fainting beetle, giant desert hairy scorpion. That's a little giant desert hairy, but he's cool. All right, let's put their board back and we'll let them get back to uh, daily life. All right, we just flipped this little desert banded gecko. Super cute. And something important to remember with these guys, look at his tail here. See how it's wiggling all over? This guy would love to drop that tail and leave it wiggling and run away. So really important, if you are gonna try to capture one of these guys, that you don't let him drop his tail. Don't grab him by the tail at all because he'll just drop it. They do regenerate their tails, but um, we want to leave them in the best shape as possible uh, after we capture them and check them out. But he's beautiful. Hold on there, buddy. They do make a little squeaky sound. And he's just absolutely gorgeous. Get some good shots of him. There, he's calmed down a little bit. Hey, bud. And when it gets really hot out here, you'll only find these guys at night. Let him get back to his little log under this and get this piece of plywood where, where I found him. Okay, buddy. Yep. Yes. Yes. Okay, pal. Got a little desert horned lizard here. When it comes to desert lizards, they're probably one of the easier ones to catch. cool little crown of thorns right behind their head or a crown of spikes really great little color pattern here well <laughs> these guys are perfect perfectly adapted to the desert environment um, they are very specialized feeders you often find them in the vicinity of ant mounds they eat nothing but ants so you can't really keep these guys in captivity with the exception of uh, the Mexican horned lizard which is quite a bit larger and actually can feed on crickets and stuff but the ones you see out here in the wild in California there's coastals there's regals there's deserts flat tails um, they're all going to be very specialized ant eaters specifically so when you see them out here you can look at them catch them enjoy them and then make sure they just end up right back where you caught them because there's no real sense in taking something home that you can't keep alive beautiful little guy he's calmed down now all right buddy your hill. Back to your hill. There you go. Okay. There you go. That's right. Uh, this is a desert sidewalk lizard. They're probably the most common lizard there is out here. They're, but they're freaking hard to catch because they're super fast. So we caught one finally. But it's pretty much there is to it. Let him go. Okay, we've been seeing desert iguanas race around all day. We haven't been able to catch one, but I just saw one go underneath this uh, piece of plywood right here, so we're going to see if we can catch it. Okay. 
time. <sighs> we got it. <laughs> All right. This is a desert iguana. They're pretty common out here in the desert. They're super fast and they're uh, really active, especially when it gets warmer. We've been seeing these guys today mostly uh, running around. This guy seems on the skinny side for some reason, but anyway, hopefully he'll be okay. They just have the cutest little faces. These guys are common in all the California deserts, all the way into Arizona and Northern Mexico. Really cool. They get a little bit bigger than this, but but not a whole lot. They typically never bite. They just want to run around and we'll let this guy get back to it here. But that is a desert iguana. Stoked to catch him. See you, buddy. Back under your back under your piece of wood. Alright, on to the next thing. Okay guys, we got ourselves a giant desert hairy that's actually a giant this time. This is a really big one. This guy here could do some damage relative to one that I was holding earlier. He's really going for his, uh, his uh, hole here. These guys are definitely uh, the biggest scorpion out here by far. These things have been living out in the desert for millions of years and they're incredible. You can see that stinger right there on the end of his tail. He's, he's ready to do business. Now, free handling one like this, you could certainly do it putting him flat on your hand. We'll give it a shot here and see what he does. You're gonna get stung. You think I'm gonna get stung? Yeah. Well, maybe. Hopefully. That'd be great content. Be great content. Uh, stung by giant desert scorpion. Okay, he means business. I, mean, it's the end of the I think day. he's just grabbing at anything right now. It's pretty much the end of the day, so I'd say just let him walk on your hand. I'll this, do it. This thing is gnarly, you guys. Look, he's grabbing onto anything. He's even grabbing onto the... Just send it. Don't walk on my shoe. Okay, well he took my... He took my hand as a, as a place to hide. Let's see if I can get him just come up in my hands. Come here, buddy. Come on. Well, he has balls of steel. Okay, we're gonna see if we can get him to crawl up into my hands here and just walk along. He should have no reason to fear if he just pictures me as an inanimate object. He's just gonna walk along doing his scorpion business, not feeling endangered, not feeling threatened anyway, just doing his scorpion thing. This is pretty much a full-grown, giant, desert, hairy scorpion right here. I've seen them a little bit bigger than this, but this one's a beauty. <laughs> per usual, when it comes to wild animals, if you aren't threatening to them, they aren't going to be threatening to you. Okay, we're gonna put this guy back under the piece of plywood that we found him. And uh, fare him well. All right, well that about wraps up a half day of herping out in the Mojave Desert. I was hoping to find a few more snakes, but nothing comes easy out here. You gotta work for it. So, until next time, hope you enjoyed it.